This video is for educational purposes only. Only test your own hardware. Doing otherwise is illegal. Don't be a skid. What's going on you guys? It is the Talking Sasquatch. Welcome back to the channel. Today, we're gonna to be exploring how to actually use the Flipper Zero to crack Wi-Fi passwords. Now, I've been debating whether or not to do this video for a very long time. I have to at least reiterate one more time. Only test your own equipment. This is strictly for educational purposes only. Don't be a skid. Now, right up top, I wanna to thank Delilah. Princess Pi 3 on Twitter. Without her, this would have been so much harder to figure out. Definitely pointing me in the right direction, so thank you so much there. Also, as far as shout outs, I wanted to shout out Astro for making these amazing stickers, uh, link down below, and then Styx for coming up with these laser engraved merch. We actually have merch now, so thank you so much, links down below. So without further ado, buckle up. It's gonna be a good one. So how this is gonna work is we're gonna use our Flipper Zero and we're gonna use for the sake of uh, experimental purposes here, the actual Wi-Fi board from Flipper. Mine's got a cool little case from Just Call Me Coco with the Marauder logo on it. I love this thing. The first thing we'll need to do is actually flash this with the current Marauder firmware that allows the saving of PCAP handshakes to the actual SD card on the Flipper itself. Now this used to be done with putting a SD card on the back of the uh, actual Wi-Fi board itself, but you no longer have to. I'm showing you, it's not actually on there, but that's the cutout where it would go. But now we don't need to anymore. So let's get at that. I'm gonna go ahead and hop on over to our desktop, open up the Google, and let's open up, let's say, uh, Skeleton Man Flasher. It's gonna show up right here on the GitHub, and we're gonna go to Download Zip. And I've already got a folder, we're gonna save that to this folder. And then we'll open that, which popped up on a different screen, right over here. And we're going to extract all, extract, and then we've got our folder right here. I'm gonna go ahead and open up PowerShell, because I like PowerShell. And then we're going to just go to that folder, so we're just gonna copy the name of the folder, and then we can just CD into there, and there we go. That puts us in the right folder. Let's resize this, it's a little big. Now I've gone over installing this many, many times, but for the sake of this, let's go through it again. Installing Git for Windows, that's in my first skid school, so I'm not gonna actually go over that, but we will go ahead and download the driver. So we're just gonna get the universal driver right there. That's gonna save to the same place, save, and then we'll just go ahead and hello, open that. Again, we're over here and extract all, extract, alrighty, there's that. And then all we gotta do is right click and go to install, open, and operation completed successfully. Now that we've got our drivers downloaded, we're gonna close that, we can close this, and follow the instructions that are right over here. First thing we're gonna do is go ahead and copy step zero. Step zero is not optional. Do not skip step zero for any cost. I've done it before and nothing good happens. Paste that right over in here and it will install the prerequisite packages. We're gonna close, close, no, we're not gonna close anything. We're gonna go back over here and then we're gonna plug in our USB to our flipper. I'll flip over to the face cam and show you that. Back over here. So yeah, we got our Marauder. We're gonna plug in our USB cable, it's just USB-C. It plugs in over here, super simple. Um, we're gonna hold the boot button, which is uh, this guy, it's the second of the buttons. I've got him covered up, but it's definitely that second one right there. And hold this while plugging it in to the USB port. Otherwise it won't flash into the DFU mode that you need it to be in. So do that, don't skip that. Now that we've got the drivers installed and we are gonna hold the boot button, we're gonna plug it in and we'll notice that, boom, it's going to work. This is not the first time I've plugged this in. Normally it'll show a little thing in the bottom that says setting up device. Uh, I've already tried this obviously for the sake of making the video, but that'll happen and then everything will work just fine. With that plugged in, we're gonna copy this little command, paste that in here, and that's gonna open up the Skeleton Man Flasher. I've been using this thing for ages. It's absolutely fantastic. And for this one, we're gonna select option two. That's the Serial Marauder on the dev board or an ESP32-S2 if you're using one of those. Uh, and this is gonna allow us to save 
the information from this directly to the SD card. Very important, press option two, press enter, and it goes. It's gonna erase the firmware and rewrite it. Everything's gonna go perfectly easily, perfectly fine. No problems here. Now also, yeah, installing Git, as I mentioned before, if this doesn't work at all, it's probably because you didn't install Git. Go ahead, watch Skid School 101, and uh, you know, get yourself learned. All right, now that that is completed, we are all done. Our Wi-Fi board is ready to rock and roll. Now that that's all set, we can close this. We can close, uh, we'll just minimize this. We're gonna need you again. Let's see, don't need to be in this folder anymore. Let's just pop back to the main folder here, and we're gonna open up QFlipper. I'm gonna disconnect the Wi-Fi board from the from the USB connection. I'm gonna plug in my flipper to it. And then I'm gonna go ahead and hello Q flipper, come back. I'm gonna go ahead and plug the Marauder Marauder board directly into the top of our flipper. Now, one thing that happens a lot of times when you plug in the Wi-Fi board is that it dismounts the SD card. So yeah, like Mm, is it still gonna show things up? Okay, it didn't dismount the SD card that time, but we're actually gonna restart it. Always restart it once you plug in the Wi-Fi board. It makes life so much easier and you know, it makes sure things don't go wrong. Currently, I'm using the latest release of Rogue Master. It's got all the apps I want on it and I was what I actually bug tested everything in already. So there we go. From here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to Applications. Gonna scroll on down to GPIO, and then we're gonna open up Wi-Fi Marauder. Once we're in Marauder, we're gonna go ahead and scan all the access points. Now, I'm gonna blur this out for the sake of my own privacy, but I do have a uh, specific router set up for this demonstration today, just to show you how it all works. We're gonna let that run for a second, then we can back out. So now that we have all of our access points actually read, we can go to the list and go there. You can see squash net option number two. That's gonna be the uh, the what we're testing today. So we can go to select, and all we're gonna do is enter in the number two. Whoops, I lost my, there we go. Uh, do, 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 save. So we selected option two, press back once, press back again. Now this is a little important because this is gonna go kind of quick. What we want to do is we wanna sniff raw that's gonna get all of the information that we can possibly get out of the Marauder. It's gonna allow us to decrypt our password. So set that to sniff raw before we de off because we need to get, again, over really quick. Now, currently I have my phone hooked up to this Wi-Fi signal, so it will actually de off my phone. So we're gonna go ahead and hit de off and that should immediately kick my phone off of the internet. And then we're gonna go down as quickly as possible to sniff. And now this is going to start reading every piece of information that it can get. Um, so we'll let that scan. And then if anything worked well, we'll be able to get the handshakes we need to decrypt this password. So after a second there, we can press the back button and that'll stop that. And we wanna make sure that this actually captured the handshakes. So what we'll do is hit the back button to get to our SD card, load up the SD card. It's gonna be under apps data, under Marauder, and then PCAPs. And look at that we have our PCAP file right over there. Now that we have our PCAP file, what do we do with our PCAP file? Well, we're gonna go ahead and download Wireshark. Wireshark is a fantastic program specifically for this kind of thing. So we're gonna what, get started, do, 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 download, and we're going to download for Windows because I'm in Windows. We're gonna go ahead and save that there and then let that download, click that. Opening when complete, do, 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 do. All right, click yes on the black screen. Would you like to, so I've already done this, but you'll just click yes. I don't have to uninstall it first, um, but you just install Wireshark, super easy. So moving on. Now that we have Wireshark, we can go ahead and download our PCAP file. So we'll hit download right there, and we'll just save it to our desktop as so. And it should show up over here momentarily. Cool, cool, cool. So we've got that. Let's open up Wireshark. And we're going to go ahead and drag and drop this guy right on down here. And it says this capture file appears to have been cut short in the middle of a packet. This is actually common. It happens. It's not a big deal. So we're going to go ahead and press enter. And then we're going to actually search for EAPOL and press enter. And we notice we've got all of these great messages right here. This shows one, two, three, and four of my handshake parts. So that's super, super good. So now that we have that, all we're gonna do from here is actually save as. 
And we're going to save this as, uh, let's call it Sharky. Sure.pcap. And then we're going to use Hashcat to decrypt the password on here. Go ahead and close our uh, Wireshark here. And then let's go find Hashcat. We can search Hashcat. Hashcat for Windows. Sure, why not? Do do GitHub. We're going to go right to the GitHub because that's where the good stuff lives. Go to the latest releases and download the 7z file. Don't download the source code. Don't download the source code. Please don't download the source code. Save. In just a second, this will download. We can open this. And I've got it open in 7-zip. Click the extract button. OK. And there we go. We'll close that and we'll open it back up. All right, pop this open, and here is our friend Hashcat. Boom, boom, boom. Make sure you have Hashcat.exe. So we're actually going to go ahead and use command for this. CMD. I know, I never use command, but this is how it works. CD. There we go. Whoops. H colon. Navigate over into your Hashcat folder. And now, whoops, we need to take our PCAP file that we just made and we actually have to convert it into a file that will work for our Hashcat. So we're going to navigate over to this website. Let me move over here. Cool. So we're going to actually go to this website, which is a cap to Hashcat site. Um, it's going to convert it into a file that we can use there. Let's go ahead and open this with Sharky. Boom. And it's going to go ahead and convert. Click the button there. Done, done, done. Hit download. And we're going to drop that into our Hashcat file. And let's make this a little bit more, you know, easy to type in. We don't know those numbers. Sharky. And keep the HC22000 extension. Very important. Need that. Need that. Pull up our terminal again. Let's get rid of that. And we're going to type in Hashcat. Dash M22000. Sharky dot hc 22000 oh i forgot to mention this let me show you one other thing you actually need a password list so delilah so graciously uh gave me one of her password lists so let me go ahead and grab that actually got that file over here because we're going to be doing a dictionary style attack on this so it's really just going to run all these passwords through dictionary so we're going to go ahead and copy this copy control c Let's go back into Hashcat and then Control V. So now we have our password list. So we can pull this back up. And then we're going to simply just enter in the password list name, which was cracked.txt.gz. And we're going to go ahead and just print it. Press the Enter button. That's really hard to say for some reason. And it's going to go ahead and do its thing. Please be patient. And just like that, status cracked. We cracked our password. That's absolutely amazing. So all, all we have to do from here is type in hashcat uh, dash dash show. And it's going to be the name of the file handy. I moved my mouse out of here. Handy or no, sharky, sorry. Sharky dot hc22000. And there we go. All you got to do, I had to press spacebar. <laughs> um, and it shows Squatchnet, and here is my super low quality password. Uh, again, it was went through on a dictionary uh, password list. So, you know, if you had a good enough password that wasn't on a password list, it would be a lot harder for Hashcat to break it. Now, I know what you may be thinking. How many passwords could possibly be on the dictionary list? Well, let's find out. Go ahead and open this file. And here we have all of our passwords. There are quite a few in here so it's gonna cover most of the more common passwords we're at do 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 still going still going still going whoop whoop, whoop. 456,000 passwords keep scrolling I'll get to the bottom of the list at some point 456,919 separate passwords on this list so if you have a common password it's on this list more than likely but yeah that's that it's pretty crazy that you can actually use flipper zero to capture the handshakes that you need to crack passwords i've never seen at least on youtube anybody go through the full workflow of this so it's a pretty neat thing to do 
I know when we were figuring this out this morning, getting it all working, we were all pretty psyched when it worked. So yeah, this is this is awesome. Now there's an awful lot of things that have to go right for this to work. You have to be de-authing a 2.4 gigahertz network. You have to actually capture the handshakes, which means you need to de-auth and then hop in and record those files um, with the record raw as quickly as you possibly can to make sure you can capture as many of the handshakes as possible. I definitely run this several times and had it not capture all of the handshakes and it's not going to work at that point. So this isn't a 100% bulletproof thing to do. And because of that, I won't be answering questions on how to do this in the comments, especially since I really don't want to encourage people to be doing this on anything that's not their own technology, not their own hardware. So yeah, it's pretty remarkable how easy it actually is to be able to actually decrypt passwords using the Flipper Zero. Um, I know there's a bunch of other ways to do it with Kali, Linux, and again, there's a number of other tools that can do this, but if you want to do it on the Flipper Zero, this is how you do it. As always, I want to thank you so much for watching. Just remember, don't be a skid, stay out of trouble. We'll catch you next time. Don't get